In this video, we're going to talk about discrete exponential growth and decay. In particular, we're going to be compounding using a formula that we will get to after this example. Um, but the first example, this example is going to motivate the use of this formula. So it goes like this. Suppose we want to deposit $10,000 into a bank account and we're offered two options, account one and account two. Um, account one has annual interest rate 5% compounded annually, whereas account two has annual interest rate 4.9% compounded daily. Okay, so account one has a bit of a better interest rate, but um, it's only compounded annually, only once a year, whereas account two has a little bit lower interest rate, but it is compounded every day. So it's not really obvious which account is better. Okay, we want to find out which account will yield the highest return on investment after one year. So the way we're going to find out this is we're going to just compute how much money is in the, each account after one year, starting with account one. So let's collect our information. First of all, our principal, our initial amount in the account, P0, um, that is equal to $10,000. So P0 equals 10,000. Um, also our interest rate, R, that is 5%. So um, 5%, but let's use the decimal version. Um, so 0 0.05. And then lastly, T, the amount of time that we are um, letting the money sit in the account for is one year. So T equals one. So why don't we start by making a formula here with P0, R, and T. We wanna find how much money is left in the account after, after T years. So P of T, how do we create an expression for P of T? Well, we're starting out with the initial amount, the principal, P0, and then every year we are increasing it according to the interest rate. So P0, and then we multiply it by one plus R every year. And if we're doing that for T years, then just uh, multiplying T times is equivalent to exponentiating to the power of T. Okay, so now we've got a formula here and we can plug in our numbers here. Uh, we wanna find how much money is left after one year and then we just plug in our values here. So P0 principal, $10,000. And then times one plus the interest rate, one plus 0 0.05 to the power of T, T is just one. And if you punch that in on your calculator, you'll find the result is $10,500. So that's how much money is in account one after one year. Now, account two is, is pretty similar. Um, so why don't we just write down this formula to start with. P of T is equal to P zero principal um, times one plus R to the power of T. And let's collect our information. Um, we wanna find what is P zero, what is R, and what is T for account two. Um, well, the principal 10,000, that's staying the same and the time again is just one year, so that's staying the same. What changes here is the rate. The re interest rate is 4.9% and in decimal, that is 0 0.049. But there is one more thing that is changing here. Um, we're not just compounding once every year, uh, we're compounding daily, so 365 times a year. So we need to introduce a new bit of information and the number of times compounded per year will be 365 because we're compounding once per day. Okay, so let's modify our formula a bit to include this variable n. Um, so initially r was the interest rate on each annual compound, but now that we're doing daily compounds, we have to change this to be our interest rate on each compound. There are n compounds, so just divide it by n. And then since there are n compounds every year, we need to multiply um, this, this t by n so that each time we increase by one year, that's an additional n compounds. So let's just write that formula once more, nice and clean, and then we'll plug in our numbers. P of t is equal to p0, the principal, times one plus r, the interest rate over n, number of time compounded per year, to the power of n t. One thing to notice here, um, to be sure that we're on the right track, is that if we plug in one for n, um, like well, like we had in account one, account one was just compounded annually, so that'd be that'd be n equals one. Um, then this would just simplify to the to the formula that we had for account one. 
um, r over 1 is just r, and then 1 times t is just t, so that matches up nicely. Okay, so let's compute. So p of 1 is equal to p0, which is 10,000, that's the initial principle, times 1 plus r over n, so 0 0.04. 9 over 365 to the n times t, so 365 times 1. And if you punch that into your calculator and compute it, you'll get a result of $10,502.17. Okay, so we can see that account 2 yields a high return on investment. There's an extra $2.17 in account 2. So that is our answer. But there are also two things to keep in mind from this example. First of all, it's not just the annual interest rate that determines what the better investment is. Account one had an annual interest rate that was higher, but it wasn't compounded very frequently. And that led it to give a lower return on investment than account two. Account two had a lower annual interest rate, but it was compounded so much that um, the compounding actually compensated for that low interest rate and ended up making account two the higher return on investment. Unfortunately, there's no quick rule where you can decide what's better just by looking at the interest rate and compounding. You just have to go through the math. The second thing is that $2.17 might not seem like a big deal. But when you're working with larger amounts of money compounded over long periods of time, it can really add up to a lot, especially since the additional money gained is funneled into the next compound. If instead of $10,000 we were talking about $100,000, and instead of one year we were talking about 30 years, then account two would be higher by over $2,000, which is, you know, not a bad reward for going through all the math. Okay, so let's recap what we learned from the previous example. We've learned the formula for compound interest, and it goes like this. P of t, the amount of money in the account after t years, is equal to the principal, p0, uh, that's just the initial amount, um, then compounded some number of times. And the amount that we multiply in each compound is equal to 1 plus r over n, r is the annual interest rate. Um, remember to use a decimal, not a percent. Always convert it to a decimal when you use the formula. And n is the number of times compounded per year. Um, and so we compound it nt times. And again, n is number of times compounded per year, t is number of years. So really what this is saying is that to get the amount of money in an account after t years, you start with the initial amount and then you increase it at the interest rate for each compound, that's the divided by n part, um, and then just do that however many times you're compounding. That's, that's the nt. All right, let's do another example using the formula. So suppose you deposit $1,000 into account having annual interest rate 4%, which is compounded quarterly. How much money will be in the account after 10 years? So here we've got our formula here, and let's just go ahead and fill in the information from the problem. P0, that is the principal, the initial amount, and that's, that's $1,000. So write that down, 1,000. R is the interest rate, the annual interest rate, which is 4%. Um, but remember, we always want to use the decimal for that, so 0 0.04. N is the number of times compounded per year, and it's compounded quarterly, that means four times per year. So n is four. And then t is the number of years uh, that we are letting the money stay in the account for, and that's just, that's just 10 years here. So t is 10. Okay, so let's write this down. P, p of 10 is equal to p0, which is just 1,000 then times one plus that fraction, so one plus, we're at a fraction bar here, um, top of the fraction is r, the interest rate, the annual interest rate, 0 0.04, and then bottom, we're dividing it by n, dividing it by four to get the interest rate on each compound, and then times the number of compounds, just nt, uh, n is just four, and then t is just 10. Okay, so we, we punch that into our calculator, and the result that we get out is just 
1104.62. So, so $1,104.62, that's how much money is in the account after 10 years. Okay, here's another example, same idea. Um, so we want to deposit $25,000 into an account having annual interest rate 6% compounded semi-annually. We've got all that information to, to plug into our formula. But the question this time is how many years will it take for the amount of money in the account to double? So, so not necessarily how much money is in the account, but how much time do we have to wait until the amount of money doubles? Um, but why don't we start this off as usual? We'll just go ahead and fill in the variables. So P0, our principal, the initial amount, that's $25,000. So $25,000. And then R, R is the annual interest rate. That's 6%. So R is 6%. The decimal for that, 0 0.06. N is the number of times compounded per year. If it's compounded semi-annually, that just means that uh, it's compounded two times per year. Semi means two, so so n is two, and then t. Uh, well, okay, so t is t is actually the thing that we want to find. How many how many years will it take? Uh, so t is something we we don't know yet. Uh, we have to figure that out. But um, we also we we know what p of t should be. We know that p of t should be double the initial amount. Uh, so P of T should be two times the initial amount, two times P zero, which is two times 25,000, which is 50,000. So we can substitute all this information into that master formula and solve for T. So, so P of T, that is $50,000. So $50,000 is equal to the initial principal, $25,000 times that compounding interest rate. So one plus the rate divided by number of compounds. The rate was 0 0.06 divided by number of compounds was two. And then all that raised to the power of NT. So two times T and oh, T is the thing that we don't know, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and simplify this a bit. Um, why don't we, let's first just simplify the inside of here. So 50,000 equals 25,000 times one plus 0.03 to the two T. And so that's just 50,000 equals 25,000 times 1.03 to the two T. Okay. Um, now we can divide both sides by 25,000. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We just get, well, let's write it down over 25,000 over 25,000 and 50,000 divided by 25,000 is two. And that makes sense because we're, we're doubling the amount of money. So that, that all looks good. So two equals 1.03 to the power of two T. Okay, so now let's introduce some logs to get the two T out of the exponent. Um, 2t is just log base 1.03, that's the base, and how many times do we have to exponentiate that to get to 2? So log base 1.03 of 2, so, so t is then just a half log base 1.03 of 2, and remember you can, you can calculate that with your calculator by, by using the change of base formula, that's just a half times log of 2 over log of 1.03 and the result when you do that is you find t is roughly 11.72 years. But hold on, we are not done yet. And the reason we're not done is that we need to round this to the next compounding period. The money in the account only increases at each compounding period, so it's it's only increasing every half year. The times at which it is compounding are just um, t equals it's it's starting at the first compound is 0 0.5 years, then is one year, then 1.5 years, then and two, so on. Um, let's get a little closer to that. So 11 11.5 years, then 12 years, and 
and so on, and we need to round this, this result here to the next compounding period. Um, now, we can't round it to 11.5 because if we do that, then, then there won't be enough money in the account after 11.5 years. Um, it's only at 11.72 years that the money in the account has doubled, so we have to round that to the next um, compounding period, so, so 12. So that is our, our result then. Um, how many years does it take for the amount of money to double? Well, the amount of years is 12 years. Great, so now we know how to model compound interest using the compound interest formula. And in the future, we'll also see how to model the case of continuously compounding interest, in which interest is compounded at every single instant.